Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today from Madison, Wisconsin, is Adam Driscoll. Hey, Adam. Hey, how's it going? Good. And we are using the magical technology of Skype so that Adam can be in the show without having to fly all the way out here to Redmond. Yeah, works great. Adam is the uh, creator and author of the PowerShell tools for Visual Studio. Um, this is now the third version of it, I believe, or is it the fourth? Um, I've kind of been working on it for years, probably since Visual Studio 2012. Okay, so, so yeah. about the third version. Third version. A huge number of downloads, like more than 300,000 downloads. Very popular, mm -hmm. very successful. And so today I thought you could show us what are the PowerShell tools, who are they for, what can you do with them, why'd you invent them, sure. and give us a demo. Yeah, sounds great. So. Um, I guess just to start off, the PowerShell tools are a set of extensions for uh, Visual Studio that enable you to um, debug PowerShell code and kind of author it in a, you know, the full experience that you get with Visual Studio, including IntelliSense, um, debugging, single stepping, uh, test explorer window, and um, access to a project system inside Visual Studio. So I built it because I saw the gap there. I was actually writing a lot of PowerShell scripts and I was primarily a C-sharp developer, so I spent a lot of time in Visual Studio and there was really no PowerShell support when I first cracked it open. So what kinds um, of things, why were you writing a lot of PowerShell scripts? I was working for a company that we were actually developing a PowerShell module. So I was doing the actual C-sharp development for that module, but to test it, we uh, would have to kind of like, you know, jump out of Visual Studio to run those scripts. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided I was going to build the tool myself. So. so there is a PowerShell editor, which mm -hmm. is a very colorful text editor. Um, but you, you know, through your extension, you get uh, all the benefits of editing and debugging in Visual Studio is what you're saying. Yep, exactly. All right, cool. Cool. Yeah, so I can share my screen and kind of show you uh, where to get this and just give a little demo of uh, how to use it. So if you are uh, looking for the uh, PowerShell tools, uh, there's a couple ways you can get it. First of all, you can uh, go through Visual Studio um, and actually use the extension uh, and updates uh, view to look for it in here. Just search PowerShell and you should find it. Uh, right away. And then um, also you can go on the gallery page. It's a great place to uh, grab it outside Visual Studio. It'll, it'll download the v6 and install it to your current version of Visual Studio. Um, it actually supports uh, 2012, 2013, and 2015 right now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other way that you can actually install this is through the uh, Visual Studio installer, so you can actually check a checkbox and it'll actually go out and download the, the latest v6 into Visual Studio during your installation process. Oh, you can really? it right off the bat. Yep. So you're so saying actually, I, I already have it installed because when I install Visual Studio, I just click select all. Yep. So I already have it. Yep, exactly. Cool. So I actually worked with a team at Microsoft to kind of get that integrated. And uh, the other way you can actually install it is if you open a PS1 file in Visual Studio, it'll pop a little. Uh, kind of ribbon down at the top to um, ask you if you want to install the tools so you kind of get a better experience. Nice. So, yeah. So, like I said, some of the features are uh, kind of outlined on this page. Um, I've been, you know, doing a decent job of updating uh, the release notes and stuff here. Uh, the other place that I direct you to if you do have any questions, concerns, comments, uh, is the GitHub page. Uh, this is where people usually report issues or submit pull requests. Um, so it's all open source and you, you can access that uh, and contribute if you want to. So that, that brings up an interesting side question. So if I use this and I have questions, I can, there's a Q&A on the gallery page, but then I can also come to the GitHub page. Do you have a preference? Do you look at one more than the other? I definitely look at the GitHub page a lot more. Um, okay. I don't have any notifications coming from the other one. So uh, GitHub is the way to do it, I'd say. Got it. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we can actually pop into Visual Studio and just kind of take a look at the tool if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have uh, Visual Studio open here with a uh, PowerShell project. So just like any other project in Visual Studio, you have a project system uh, for PowerShell scripts. There's a couple different project templates that you can use. I have a module project template that automatically adds tests and a module manifest. Um, and then a script um, template that adds just a PS1 file, that kind of thing. This is actually one of my other modules that I open source. It's just a pinvoke module that lets you execute uh, Win32 API commands. Um, 
But you can see that I've kind of organized it in this project system. And just like uh, any other uh, Visual Studio project, you can click through and open files and edit them, that kind of thing. A lot of people really like the PowerShell tools because being in Visual Studio, you automatically get source control for free. So you can see all this stuff is checked into GitHub right now. You can see the status that everything is currently committed and I don't have actually have any changes. Um, so if we like pop into one of these commands or these uh, files, you can see that this is a PowerShell uh, manifest file, so a PSM1 file. Um, some things that you'll notice that you should see in any kind of language inside Visual Studio is that we have syntax highlighting. Uh, we have code collapsing on functions and comments. Uh, we have a drop down here for finding and jumping between different functions that are defined inside your uh, module or script file. So that should work on anything. Do you have go to definition and peak definition and refactoring and all that? And, and do you have I to write that don't. all yourself if you want it? Um, I could write. Because you don't yeah, get so, any of that for free, right? Right. So I'd have to write all that myself. Okay. Um, one uh, interesting project that uh, is going on right now is PowerShell Editor Services. So there's actually a guy in Microsoft that's been uh, working on the Visual Studio Code support for um, PowerShell. And out of that, he's actually open sourced a library called PowerShell uh, Editor Services. And the idea is that anybody implementing an editor could take advantage of those editor services and then use them to do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the um, kind of the future of PowerShell tools would be to utilize uh, those editor services because they do provide things like that, like go to definition and right. find all references and that kind of stuff. So right now, this is kind of a, a home-brewed um, implementation of a PowerShell sure. editor, but uh, mm -hmm. in the future, hopefully, you can consolidate that with the VS Code one, too. And what about uh, like Rosalind-type support, so light bulbs and code analyzers and all that? Is that also something yeah, that has to some be of that done is by in hand? There, but I, I a lot of the Roslyn stuff isn't going to work just because uh, PowerShell doesn't actually, you know, build on top of Roslyn. Right. So right. Um, we'd have to really implement that kind of stuff. I know there are some like uh, asks for some of that, especially um, around refactoring and you know the peak peak definition stuff. Um, well, I know that in the, just you know in the last three minutes of talking, we've come up with like two years worth of work. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's focus on what's in the tools now. All right. So. Um, <laughs> Just like uh, any editor, like I said, it has all this uh, functionality that really isn't there um, when you first open Visual Studio. Uh, in addition to uh, the main code editor window, which you get things like uh, IntelliSense um, and completion and that kind of thing, uh, cool. you also have access to some other windows that I've implemented. Um, one really nice one is the PowerShell interactive window. So. Um, it's just a PowerShell prompt inside Visual Studio. Nice. Uh, this is where all the output goes, and um, as well as the output window. So it kind of goes to both places. But the nice thing with the PowerShell interactive window is that you can actually uh, do the same thing that you can do in any PowerShell prompt and um, you know run commands. Yep. Cool. Kind of um, you also have access to the DTE object, so if you've ever worked with any kind of automation inside Visual Studio, um, you can actually write scripts that automate Visual Studio. So you can see I can grab the active document and things like the full name of that document. Um, so the DTE is like the yes. com-based wrapper around the Visual Studio automation framework. So you can write scripts that automate Visual Studio using something like this. Very cool. Um, on the left-hand side here, you'll see that I have a Test Explorer window. Uh, there's actually a test adapter that's developed that will find pester tests. So pester is the unit testing framework for PowerShell. Um, it's kind of written in the BDD syntax where you have described context and it blocks for um, describing how you are testing a particular piece of functionality. And then what's going to happen is uh, the adapter window is going to find each one of the describe blocks and then list them out here so that you can right click and run them just like you could uh, with a C-sharp test or something like that. Um, in this case, the, the test is passing. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you have debugging features. So if I click F5, um, you're going to see here is uh, I've set a breakpoint um, inside my test. Uh, it's about to call this function, and you have access to all the things you'd expect in, in, in debugging. So I have access to the call stack. You can see that since I'm running it through Pester, the call stack's actually kind of big because um, it's going down through the, the Pester module. And you can double-click on those places and jump to different uh, source files. 
Um, additionally, you have access to uh, the locals window. So these are all your locally defined variables at this point in time. And you can expand those and uh, break down things, just like any like .NET object sort of thing. Um, single stepping is also part of this. So you can step through your code um, as it evaluates and um, debug things as you see fit. Um, so yeah, and then all output, like I said, goes out to the output window. So now you can see that this particular test passed after running for 40, 54 seconds because I was talking through that. Mm -hmm. um, but that is kind of like a high level overview of what's currently in the PowerShell tool. So it's kind of like, you know, basic language support um, integrated into Visual Studio for PowerShell. So there's a lot of things that um, are kind of uh, asks um, that have been almost complete like uh, form support. There's actually a Windows Forms designer in um, in some beta versions of uh, Visual Studio tools that I have um, a Windows, that allows you to oh. create uh, Windows Forms with a drag and drop editor. And then uh, it generates PowerShell code that actually will generate that form on the fly. So you could just have a PS1 script um, generate that kind of stuff. So, so, a PS, so you would do that for having UI in your PowerShell scripts? Right. So, we have a lot of, uh, you know, administrators sometimes, or you know, the developer of a PowerShell script is sometimes an administrator that he's going to hand off this script to um, some sort of just, you know, uh, technical support kind of person. And uh, rather than having them run the script, they'll put like a little UI on it to like okay. check a couple buttons, that kind of thing. So it's good for that. So that's a that's a that's an amazing example of something that supported WinForms, something modern that supported WinForms first. <laughs> yeah, right. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, the, the thing with uh, PowerShell and XAML is that you, there's really not too much plumbing that you need to do. Um, you can hook up the XAML designer inside Visual Studio and then just have the PowerShell kind of compile the XAML on the fly and, okay. and do all the finding and stuff. So there's actually a lot less involved in that than there was with the Windows Forms okay. uh, implementation. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of a, a run through of the PowerShell tools for Visual Studio. Like you said, it's got a lot of downloads, and um, I'm currently working with the team to make sure that it works on the next version of Visual Studio so that yep. um, we can make sure that this continues to be a really popular extension and people really like it. And uh, I encourage everyone to go out and you know report issues, and I'm always open to contributions, so any anybody that wants to help out uh, implementing some of these features or fixing some bugs, I'm uh, always uh, willing to, you know, take pull requests and that kind of thing. So Yeah, it's on, it's on GitHub, it's open source, as you said. Yep. Um, now, so for somebody who's been doing a lot of PowerShell development and already knows PowerShell um, and is also in Visual Studio, it's great to be able to do this in Visual Studio and get the benefits. If you find mm -hmm. yourself as a a uh, Visual Studio guy who now needs to start doing PowerShell, um, what would you recommend a, a good place to, for people to learn how to do PowerShell? Um, I would start with PowerShell.org. Um, it's kind of a, a group of the PowerShell MVPs kind of got that started, and it's a great resource. Uh, they have all kinds of um, blog posts and links to uh, some free books that are available out there to learn PowerShell. Um, so that that is probably where I would start because okay. it's a great jumping off point. So what are some of the things that you're working on uh, feature-wise for the next version of this? What are like the top two or three things that are being asked for? Uh, the big thing is going to be PowerShell Editor Services because it implements a lot of the stuff that people are asking for in terms of going to definition and finding all references, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, that's going to take a really big refactor on my my part. So that's kind of my main focus over you know the next couple of months, aside from um, the next version of Visual Studio support. So historically, Visual Studio support really hasn't been too difficult to implement. It usually just works, um, but uh, we need to do some testing and probably fix a couple of bugs around that. Sure. All right. Cool. Well, thanks for cool. coming on and showing us this. This is very, very cool stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.